Exotic Fish in Thailand is a fishing resort in Panga province in southern Thailand and it was here that I was lucky enough to land my first ever arapaima. Having experienced the dramatic fights and seen these incredible fish close up in all their ancient looking glory, I was back to see if I could get myself an even bigger one. A couple of rods were set up with chicken and live baits for the arapaimas, or aries as they're affectionately known, and the other rods were fish for non-predators with the classic lum and poly balls on a cage feeder. I managed to get in a swim with some good form for arapaimas, so I was quietly confident I might get lucky. If you've ever fished for them, you've probably seen these air breathers on the surface when they come up to take a breath, and it's quite a sight to see a six foot long red and silver dinosaur rolling about in front of you. It definitely gets the adrenaline going. Just 20 minutes in, and the chicken rod cast near the water paddle was away. It turned out to be an Amazon red tail, but that was me off to a good start to the day. Meanwhile, Graham down the bank from me was doing battle with a good sized arrow. After all that excitement, it went quiet for a couple of hours, but then out the blue, the chicken rod rattled off once again. It wasn't an arapaima, but another air breather in the shape of a good sized African walking catfish, another new species for me. I soon found out though that they're as slippery as an eel and a right bugger to hold. Landing an arry can be a tricky business. Their heads and mouths are solid bone and getting a good hook hold is easier said than done. On top of that, they usually leap clear of the water a few times during the fight and violently shake their heads about, so more often than not, you end up with a hook pull. Someone once said to me, you land about one out of every five fish hooked. So with this in mind, I thought it best to just crack on and concentrate on getting another chance, because they were obviously on the feed today. When that chance came though, it was the lum rod that went, so I thought I was into a carp. But when it surfaced, and up came the long red flank of an arry, I figured I must have mixed up which rod was which. Surely it must have been the rice bait rod. But no, it was the lum rod. I was attached to a massive arrow by nothing more than a few inches of normal braid and a standard car book. More than likely, the little java barb had taken the poly ball and got itself hooked, and in turn got itself eaten by the arrow. Once I realised that, I didn't much fancy my chances of landing it. Surely I'd get bitten off, or the hook would snap, or something down there would give out during the fight. Somehow, everything held up, and to my amazement and relief, a massive tree trunk of a fish rolled into the waiting cage. Without a doubt, Arapaima is a stunning looking fish. There's a primal, prehistoric aura to them, and their striking features, together with their sheer width and bulk, earn the respect of every angler worth his salt. At the time, this was the biggest fish I'd ever landed. I was plenty happy with that arry, but just for good measure, I had a couple more fish before the day was done.
goes without saying that the best place to fish for arapaima is in their native rivers of South America. But the resort lakes of Thailand offer a great opportunity to experience catching one. An experience I can highly recommend. Mm -hmm.